welcome to my uh, brisket barbecue. I, yeah, I haven't done a brisket video here, but I'm gonna perform right now on this on this very table. Some of the key ingredients to make my my style of brisket. We have carrots. We got an onion. Napolita is freshly picked. See here. There's a lot of them there because it's good. Let the brisket in here. One uh, twelve dollar brisket right here. I got the brisket right there. Boy. It's always good to wash the meat off. You gotta treat meat like it's like a person. You know, you gotta let, it, let that thing cool off. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna first thing we gotta prep is the, the napolito. We'll set that there. And what you do is you just basically little fine things on the napolitos. This is cactus. This is local cactus that I fry them to kind of kill off the spikes. Let's do. So there you go. See? It's kind of like this right here. Dice up some uh, some onion. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just sort of grill these dudes up a little bit. Well, not. We're gonna go ahead and prep the rest of these guys. This is carrots. Carrots are a really important thing. So I think you know if you're gonna start smoking brisket, the best thing you can have, and whenever you're gonna smoke or do any grilling, you have one of these guys. A pan is one of the best things that controls the temperature. It doesn't allow your it doesn't allow your meat to get totally burned because you got this pan here that's always gonna collect the grease and control the temperature of the meat. Like that. Put it here. What you gotta do? You gotta now take a knife like this with ridges on it. Back. Look at this. Cut this beef like a book. You try to cut it like a book. You kind of slice it, you know, back and forth. You try to create, you try to create these layers. You got an old barbecue sauce right here. This old barbecue sauce. You know, you take all you know, the little water towel, shake it up. Do that. I always take old uh, jalapeno. You know, when I start vinegaring or try to do stuff with jalapeno, I just throw a little of that in there. Cap it off. Put that back in the refrigerator. Sugar. Always put some. Usually a lot of it. I don't like. I like brown sugar, so I always put some of that in there. And then salt. And people don't. Salt's really good. So you put some salt in there. Like that. Uh, some uh, ground pepper. Mix the shit together like this. Do it here like this. You're really just work it in there like this. Yeah. So this is gonna be the base tray. It's like almost like you're making a casserole to go on a smoker grill. And you put the fat side down. See this fat here? It's all fat right there. It's good. We're on phase two of this whole ordeal. See, this, see, I'm just doing prepping right now. It's called prep cooking. I'm not gonna eat on this tonight. Even though I've had a couple beers and I would like to eat it, but. It's called discipline. You gotta exercise some kind of discipline about cooking. And this will all be ready for tomorrow. Take the fucking meat off and just put a bed of carrots down. They're like little Yeah, you know, I used to do carpentry, you know, and these are like the uh the uh braces to prevent, you know the carrots they don't really burn, you know, they just sort of mesh down and stuff. So we're gonna pick a little carrot uh steaks and then you put them all over the place. Doesn't matter, they can absorb shit anyway. It's always important to sort of like take a little bit of nacelitos, put them in between here, a little onion on it, another nacelito, two of them, some onions on here like this. Here's the big, like this. Oh, God damn, it's hot. I'm going to throw a little bit of gravy. Keep this gravy, this little mix, because this is what's going to cool off the meat when it gets too hot, you know? Later, like this here. Like the old, this old, uh, it takes skill to do this. Go and grab this pan here. Done. See it? Now this here, this extra little, this little, let's call it reserve, to keep this shit from drying out. Okay, so you got this great looking casserole deal. What do you do next? Well, I got this shit right here. I got this for like a dollar. It's like a breaded crumbs. 
it makes it look good. I don't know what it is, but after about eight hours of being on the grill, it's going to change just uh, peanuts. I think peanuts taste really good with barbecue. I think you would agree if you had them. So I'm going to throw some peanuts on here. They get roasted and shit, and they go down to the thing. Local honey. If you can have local honey, the more sugar, the better with uh, barbecue. I just prepared a uh, brisket right now. Now, I'm not going to try to cook this because it'll take about at least six hours to cook this thing. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to set it in the refrigerator and let it sit. And that's one thing that you got to realize about meat. you got to let meat sit. It ain't all about you now having it right now. You gotta let, It's like a preparation. It's like a, like seducing a woman. You can't just like work up to this shit. And so that's the way I work with this kind of meat. You kind of like say, tomorrow I'm going to cook your ass. But until now, I'm going to let you sit with this refrigerator right now. Chapter one right there. And chapter two is all about the fire and all about weight and... It was pretty freaking hot. And you have to really know your fires first. And know that that's some freaking hot shit there. And then if you throw anything on there and close it off, you're gonna you're gonna destroy it within ten minutes. This is going there. So I have to worry the worst thing is having to restart a fire when you're cooking. And I hate doing that shit. I'll set this thing down here, see it's already okay. It only it's only gonna last for a while, but it's gonna progressively go down. Put this dude in there. There, you gotta listen to the meat. If it, it, whether it's bubbling or sizzling or it's just slowing, going slow. And you know, it's like probably, it's probably about nine or so, nine. The thing's been going for about three hours. But brisket takes at least six or seven hours. And you gotta let it kind of dry out and do its little business. And I know my instinct about this. If the fire is not that hot to burn all the vegetables. That's a key thing. I've kept it really moist. I've gone out there and tested the fire. Okay, well, here it is. Luckily, it's been on here. Let me tell you, see, every cooking, when you cook stuff, it's like an adventure. Now, this is more, this is not traditional Texas brisket. What this is, what this is, is just a good old roast. You got a good old roast. See right there? So now that tells you right now, he didn't just peel off there. That is, it's not cooked to fine level. It's just sort of, it's cooked. I mean, it's all done. But I like it where it just sort of breaks off accidentally. You know, like that's a little tough there. Maybe a little. That's maybe some ligament. This is one of the good things about having a dog over here. Come on, go ahead and just. I gotta get rid of that juice. I'm not. Oh fuck! What the hell? The juice there. There you go. He's got that. That's like a soup. I, I don't know if Haas likes this. This may be a little challenging for Haas right now. So all the other dogs know there's some shit going down right now. They can smell that like grease, but it's some... Haas is like growling other dog that might try to take his food through that screen door there. Okay. So we got the, uh, the briskets off there. That's the juice. And we got them all separated. You got the carrots and the onions in there. I can tell you it didn't get too hot because this stuff didn't break down. They got hot. I mean, they're all done. But, see so this stuff here? Okay. I just try to take that barbecue, this piece of meat out there on the grill. And I can tell you right now. See, the grill is way too... It's, uh... I have to restart the grill. And there's nothing worse than trying to or put more wood in there and re-hit it. You don't know where you're going to go. It's too late. You see, I'm not a real, I mean, I'm not a professional barbecue pit master. I don't have a constant pit rolling at a certain temperature all the time. It's, you know, this is what barbecuing is like. It's an adventure on heat. And so, you have to realize that the meat ain't going to be like what you thought it was going to be. But don't fuck it up. Big key issue. So, well, you just get your knife out and you cut yourself a little, a little slice of it with, with a little bit of more d'oeuvres and that's it. Game over.